and this is just rookie hour in my opinion because how do you show up to court and not have all this shit dialed in there shouldn't there you know this was a hearing that was supposed to take maybe an hour and it was three hours Bruce Rivers he's the criminal lawyer Bruce Rivers he's the criminal lawyer Bruce Rivers he's the criminal lawyer and what he do and it's gonna react to all the self snitching oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board-certified criminal defense lawyer, and today that matters. Why? Because we're going to be talking about a criminal matter in federal court. But this is also with our content genius, Michael Rivers, behind the camera, behind the ideas, and without him, I probably wouldn't exist. So um, we're going to we're talking about Hunter Biden today, and some kind of stuff went down in federal court and kind of needs to be explained because being in federal court is a different animal and people are saying well what the hell happened well let's tell you but before we tell you what happened this is brought to you by contractscouncil.com contractscouncil.com is a really good way uh if you're just if you need an agreement written and you don't have the wherewithal to do it yourself you can get a lawyer to do it and if you're a lawyer you can earn some extra money or you can earn however much you want working at home, doing contracts for people. We have a lot of clients, but we need a lot of lawyers. So if you are a lawyer, and I know some of you watch this channel, I uh, get comments from you all the time. I know you're out there, and you're looking for a little uh, way to make uh, a little extra money from home, go to contractscouncil.com. Okay, so Hunter Biden. Let's just talk about what he's charged with to begin with. I have here in my cheeseburger stained hands uh, a, a letter from uh, the uh, Leo Weiss uh, first of all David Weiss is the uh, US attorney for the District of Maryland he was appointed by Trump and kept on by Biden for this case specifically um, and so the letter is to the district court office it was sent out ju uh, June 20th and this is what it says. Enclosed, please find two informations. Informations are documents that they use to charge. It's, you know, normally you have to go to a grand jury, but you can waive your right to a grand jury and be charged by information. It's like a criminal complaint. In, please find enclosed two informations to be docketed in the criminal matters involving the above referenced defendant. The first information charges the defendant with tax offenses. So he's got two tax counts for willful failure to pay federal income tax. And I believe it's from 2017 and 2018, a little over 100,000 each year. The defendant has agreed to plead to both counts of the tax information. The second information charges, and these are misdemeanors, by the way. The second information charges the defendant with a firearm offense, namely one count of possession of a firearm by a person who is an unlawful user or addicted to a controlled substance in violation of 18 U.S.C. 922 G3 and 922 A2. Uh, and the defendant has agreed to enter a pretrial diversion agreement with respect to the firearm information. So let's just talk about that. For A lot of times these tax counts are resolved civilly. And so he's agreed to plead to two misdemeanors and get probation. But the pretrial, and here's the other thing, the pretrial diversion on the gun case, almost, I, wanna, and I, I don't want to say it never happens, but in 25 years, I've never seen it happen. Usually if they're going to do something like that, they just dismiss the case. And But this particular statute is not charged out very often either. So you've got, so people are saying this is a sweetheart deal, sweetheart deal, blah, blah, blah. And it may be, but it, it there's other things that are kind of in the works that need to be considered when analyzing this in its entirety. Whether it's a sweetheart deal or not, we have a situation where you've got a president's son who's being prosecuted by a Trump appointee, and this is how they agreed to resolve, you know, both cases. The gun charge is almost never charged out. But why are they able to charge that out? Because they know he was in possession of it, and they know he was using crack. Um, but does that mean that they can't prosecute him for anything else? No, not necessarily. 
So when they so today, so they were supposed to go in front of a judge today and enter a plea. It was called an 11C plea, and what it's designed to do is, here is what the deal is, judge. There's no deviating from it. At 11, and if the judge accepts 11C3, she has to do everything that's in the plea because it doesn't give her the discretion under that rule. So the judge appointed, and the judge was appointed by Trump. So these are all Trump appointees. She pressed both sides about the term of the agreement because it, it was unclear about some things. Uh, with uh, U.S. Attorney David Weiss of the Delaware, another Trump appointee, as I said, um, and uh, and Biden kept him on just to oversee this case. So the judge was concerned about how two separate deals, one involving unpaid taxes and one involving gun possession charge, potentially intersected and her purview. One of the things that the uh, pretrial diversion was supposed to do is you keep your nose clean for two years and then it gets dismissed. So, so the felony does not go on your record. So Weiss's office, this is what they said earlier in a statement, Hunter Biden received taxable income in excess of $1.5 million annually in the calendar years of 2017 and 2018, despite owing in excess of $100,000 in federal income taxes each year, he didn't pay the income tax due for either year. And so the question is whether the gun charge could be diverted, um, in other words, stayed over his head for, until he fulfilled certain conditions. The judge was concerned that who's going to monitor this? You know, is it going to be me? I mean, and where's the statutory authority to have me, the judge, be the arbiter? And the agreement <clears throat> would, have, would have asked her to be the arbiter if the president's son violated the deal over 24 months. And she didn't believe that the judiciary would normally oversee such an agreement. Usually it's probation that does that. And it was the responsibility of the executive branch to bring charges. So to bring charges or to stay charges, that is solely in the discretion of the prosecutor. The judge also said that she worried about the tax agreement uh, charge didn't give her the ability to, ex uh, to the ability to reject or modify the deal and that the gun charge agreement could shield Biden against further prosecution regarding his tax issues. So here's, here's what she was doing. She's asking both sides all these questions, okay? And they don't have answers for her. She asked the, you know, the defense, well, does this agreement shield him from any further prosecution? Well, yes, it does, Judge. And then she asked the prosecutors, does this shield him? From no, it doesn't. So you don't have a meeting of the minds there. And that's, I think, the main reason that she um, didn't go through with the plea today. So, and this is just rookie hour, in my opinion, because how do you show up to court and not have all this shit dialed in? There shouldn't, there's, you know, this was a hearing that was supposed to take maybe an hour, and it was three hours. And then the judge says, I want you. So, what they ultimately did was they didn't do a plea. Well, they entered a not guilty plea. That's what you do in an in initial appearance anyway. And then they've got to come back. And, you know, people are saying, oh, Hunter Biden's going to trial. Hunter Biden ain't going to trial on shit because, number one, they've got him cold on these charges. The long and short of it is this the judge is a, a felt like she's hamstrung by an 11C3 and. Most judges don't like taking those pleas because they don't, they don't want the... If you look at the agreement, the judge's name is not on the agreement. The judge's name is nowhere on the agreement. So generally speaking, the judge is not a party to the agreement and so is not bound by the agreement. But under 11C, the judge is bound by the agreement. So that's the one thing. The other thing is there's not a meeting of the minds. The judge and the prosecutor or the, the two, the prosecutor and the defense lawyer don't, are answering the same questions differently to the judge. So the judge asked whether the investigation against the president's son was ongoing, to which Weiss responded that it was, but he said he couldn't share further details. She also raised a hypothetical asking if Biden could face charges of failing to register as a foreign agent, because he, he were or Burisma, whatever, wherever he worked, and whether the agreement blocks his prosecution for such charge. The defense said they believed it did, 
It would prohibit him from being charged, and the prosecution disagreed. So that's a big, that's kind of a big deal. Biden's lawyer was overheard telling the prosecutor, then we'll rip it up, ostensibly referring to the agreement. I don't know why he would do that. You know, when you get lawyers who are think they're big shots, and they are probably big shots in another arena, but maybe they're not criminal lawyers, and they <clears throat> don't practice in federal court a lot, this shit doesn't happen. This, this kind of thing has never once happened to me in 25 years of a federal experience. We don't know if Hunter Biden's going to be charged with anything else. You know, there were, I knew this was going to happen, though, because there were public statements by the U.S. attorney saying that the investigation was ongoing and public statements by defense lawyers saying, you know, this settles the deal. So they're going to have to come to some agreement. And otherwise, they can say, okay, well, there's, and there's two ways to resolve that. They can come to an agreement and say you're not going to get prosecuted for anything else. But the more likely uh, scenario is that, okay, we'll settle this, but it has no impact on anything else going forward. That's probably what's going to happen. He's going to take this deal regardless because he's sort of screwed on both um, tax and the gun case. So we'll continue to follow this, but I, you know, I want to be a little even-handed because you know we've talked about Trump. You know, now we're talking about Biden, and you know they're all interesting things. So, but I'm shocked at how unprepared um, really both sides are. Uh, they should, but it's really more on the defense to nail this down. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. This has just been a quick update about the Biden situation. If you're a lawyer, go to contractscouncil.com and sign up for Patreon, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?